Hi, I'm Scott Francis, editor of Products Finishing, and I'm here with Andrew Kosowski, owner of Veterans Metal. It's a legacy metal plating company out of Clearwater, Florida. Andrew acquired the business in 2020, and since then he's been on a mission to um, basically transform the business, taking it from a, a legacy metal finishing business um, and upgrading all of the equipment and revamping it um, embracing automation and digital driven solutions. Andrew, uh, we started this story back in January, I believe, um, following kind of your progress, and I'm really excited to get a chance to hear how, how things have come along, and you've had an incredibly busy year. Um, can you kind of tell us uh, how, how things have gone this sure. year? Sure, we've had uh, three major objectives as we spoke last January. One was to select uh, suppliers for our new uh, metal finishing shop, uh, all the different equipment we're going to use in the new processing line. Our second objective was to select a location because we're going to move into a new building. And the third was to become NACAP certified. And I'm happy to report we've accomplished all three of those things. First, um, the site selection, we're going from a 5,000 square facility to a 15,000 square facility. Beautiful 26 foot ceiling height, so it accommodate everything we want. Uh, secondly, uh, the metal finishing uh, portion of the new lines one was for anodized and chemical conversion. We selected Corotech in conjunction with PSI. Uh, they're out of Springfield, Ohio. So we're very excited uh, they're going to be building our line for us. It's going to be a mechanically assisted line with hoist assemblies, beautiful new tanks, beautiful new heating system, beautiful waste treatment system. Uh, they've started that construction. So we're very excited to work with them. We also selected them because of their work culture, their company culture, very much matched ours. Multi-generational, family-owned business, so it really was something we were looking for as well as a provider. The other one was our automated passivate line for stainless steel. Uh, we selected ESMA in conjunction with Best Technologies. Uh, they're also a wonderful company. Uh, they really match what we wanted to have as far as this automated system, fully automated passivate system. Uh, again, uh, we expect to have that also at the end of the year. Uh, construction's already underway as well. Uh, the other item uh, that we did this year was become NACAP certified. Uh, our customers were asking us because they really like our work, they like our communication style, they like our attention to quality, say, when do you become NACAP certified? And sure enough, we were able to accomplish that this, this year for anodizing, and next year we're going to add the chem film and we're going to add the passive A system as well. To your point, major accomplishments all kind of undertaken in one year. Yes. Um, what's, uh, what's something you've, you've learned from this process, one of the biggest discoveries? Yeah, a great, I think, um, comparison is when you go to a restaurant, you're looking at the menu, your eyes are bigger than your stomach, right? You're ordering more than you can eat. And when we set out the RFP uh, last year, uh, we oversized what we were looking for. As we got into the details with the suppliers, and a lot of reasons why we selected these suppliers, was they brought us back down to earth. So, this is what you really need. You know, you don't need all that. And one of the things we had to find a happy balance for was, how do we meet current customer needs, but also include scalable growth, right? When we grow, I don't want to just have to buy something else again or retrofit because it's much more costly. So we did work with these vendors to be able to be scalable. So for example, in our new anodizing chem film line, the superstructure already allows space for future tanks but we're not getting the tanks right now. We're going to include them at a later date. The same with our stainless steel uh, passivate line. It's a system that allows for growth, additional tanks to be added at a later date. And so that was a big lessons learned for us. We definitely oversized, but the vendors that we selected helped us pick the right size, for not only for our current capacity, but for our future growth as well. So I guess the big question is what's next for, for you guys and where's Where's the company headed? Yeah, so one of the main reasons we're at this event here at IMTS uh, was to look at future growth. Uh, so we're looking at future services down in 2024 and 2023 because our, our new facility and new lines will be installed in 2023. So we're looking at the end of that year, 2024, 2025. So we're looking at um, new services in the water jet capability. We're looking at deburring capability, things that customers are asking for. So they want more value added services at a local level to have them ship their parts out. So we're addressing those by coming to this kind of an event and looking at those future needs and the potential to adding into our nice new shop. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for taking the time to revisit the story a little bit with us. If you're interested in hearing more of Veterans Metal story, visit pfonline.com slash podcast and check out episode 14. Thanks so much.